Hi, my name is Pete, and we're down in the underground facility. Whatever they were shooting at that uh, was fairly, fairly nasty. John Bird Carlson. So this is com system equipment here. Well, he probably just attached that. Somebody dragged it over this way. Let's see if you can drag this. Even if I don't get hurt, I would want it onto that. This is the Titan Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Its mission, deliver a payload to a designated spot on the Earth's surface some 5,500 nautical miles away. Its warhead could level an entire city. So we're kind of rather fortunate today. We've got Pete. Uh, Pete was uh, one of the original caretakers here in the late 1990s. So Pete has a 23 year history with this particular facility, this particular complex. And um, he was telling us some phenomenal stories about um, how um, this facility after it was decommissioned back in 1965 was actually used as a target practice for the military. They were using um, uh, the, the, the personnel um, tunnels uh, in the, in the uh, tennis solars as um, ballistic um, uh, testing, um, testing all sorts of ordnance and weapons or whatever. And then in the uh, the 80s, the uh, the above ground um, part of the complex was actually used by the NTS, uh, NTSB. Uh, basically, they're just blowing aircraft and uh, you know utilizing all sorts of ordnance and explosives and whatever too. So uh, pretty pretty fascinating. So we now we've got Pete um, who has given us um, a tour, his perspective as he, um, I mean. Uh, he's, he's, I will say he's a, he's a connoisseur when it comes to the, the Titan complexes and um, his knowledge is so incredibly vast but very knowledgeable guy too so yeah enjoy the tour. Hi my name is Pete and we're down in the underground facility here it was uh, part of the US Ballistic Missile Defense and uh, it's been used for a number of purposes after the fact uh, there have been uh, NTS be explosives testings on the surface. There have been ballistics testing by military contractors and uh, I was caretaker of this facility back in the late 90s into the early 2000s and uh, we're having a look around to see how it looks today. We've got busy in here. We get the other smorgasbord board room over here. Obviously once we, once we find our way to the other pal room, we're going to just um, demolish this, we're going to demo this. And then we're going to lay in and see what we can actually salvage. But this looks like to be um, old panels. Yeah, that's from the latrine. The trains? Yep. Yeah. No, no, behind this over here. Hot oh, 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 water heater oh, there. Yeah. See that right there? That slanted steel panel with a slide. This one right here? That's what they used to fire through. That okay. used to be over by the antenna tunnel. And then it got dragged over here. We dragged it down here. Okay, so this was, so the, so the weapon was pointing out of here. That's my the understanding. Ballistics. And that was down the antenna cells, right? Yeah. The whole length of the there. personnel tunnel. Because yeah. that's the longest straight section of tunnel they have. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. So somewhere in here. Here, pick one right here. But that's the one, you said. This. this is one of the things they used to put their targets on. Now we had found some. This looks like it's just been cut. Yep. We had found some. Well, you see that right there? Right. Something, something hit that. There's another one right here for the indentation. Yeah, this is where some of the some of the projectiles had struck. So what sort of weapons were they firing? I have no idea. But it looked like Sabot rounds because of the kind of wadding we found yep. in the antenna silo or antenna tunnel. Because that's 750 feet, um, just in that particular entrance. Yeah. I mean, before it starts to curve to the right hand side in yep. the antenna silo. So they had all that space, you know. So what was what was, what was the main up of the determining what exactly? On the ballistic leg, I mean, I like love to know. on the impact on the armor, for example, or the range, or I mean, what was maybe, maybe how well it penetrated, you know, a, a calibrated thickness of steel or something else. They may have had something in front of the target to see how well it withstood. That organization, that was a private uh, entity under, 
under the... Uh, I think that was ARA, which would be, uh, I think it was Applied Resources. But well, that was a military Service. contractor. Uh, yes, definitely. There's some of the holes right there. I was going to say, this must be part of that. This is part of that hole. Yeah. Whatever it was, it's fairly so nasty. So the military um, had a number of... Um, this is like... Our organization is doing a lot of uh, ballistics testing and firing in the, other, in the antenna silo. And uh, some of these um, objects are basically placed to test um, the, the ballistics um, and the actual armor. I mean, what sort of... I mean, how big is this? This is 3 eighths. 3 eighths still? I think this is 3 eighths inch thick here. This part here is even thicker, but it's not the yeah. part of the holes in it. Because that's like 3 quarters. Is that one back right? And just like, we've got 3, we've got 4, got a few more over here. Yeah, there's a nice... So the floor, was this, it was, it was was this basically placed upright? I mean, these must be the legs, right? Yeah. So this was, ba there's this the base. This may have been their catch There's the base, so basically, you know, the impact was on this side of here, on the yeah. inside. Well, you see how they've got this hat here? Yeah. I wonder if this wasn't to catch anything that went through, they maybe have had sand or some other sort I mean, of yeah. ballast material in there. I think more than likely, right? So this this was probably the uh, uh, catchment for the uh, the the casing, right? Yeah, whatever then, whatever the projectile was. And this was shut. No. Yeah. Okay, so well, the casing will be the casing will be clipped right in there. Yeah. And they would have something else behind this to catch the water. Look, at, look at how much is down here too. Look at how thick that yeah. plate steel there. I mean, Whatever they were shooting at that uh, was fairly, fairly nasty. I would love to have seen what was going on. And that was what, what decade? Was that, that was the 70s? They were out of here by 65, so somewhere after that, presumably. In the 1970s. I think the 70s and is was this facility the only facility that they're doing uh, ballistics testing in? I have no idea. Right. Yeah, I've been to a few others and I've never seen anything like this in any of the other yeah. sites. From what I heard, uh, this place was the yeah, they use this place, they cooled it off. I mean, the others are basically like an environmental easement, for example, it just it was under lockdown. Mm -hmm. But they, they try to like, they, they attempted to like repurpose this into like, you know, another government facility, for example. Yep. Then, just in order to like monetize and do a little bit more testing, they said, okay, we'll just keep this one open for ballistics testing. Mm -hmm. And then honestly, then the NTSB, was that in the 80s? They could have started then. I have no idea how long it had been going on. So it, explain, was still going, it was still going on as of 2000. Right. So explain this. So the NTSB in, I would say, probably would have been after the ballistics testing, right? Could have been concurrent with it. Okay. So what, what exactly was the NTSB doing? And the, that's, the, that's the National Transport Safety Board, right? National Transport Safety Board. That would investigate all air accidents in the United States. And what sort of testing were they doing above ground? They were definitely firing projectiles at things. But they had planes here, right? Like, what yes. sort of planes were they? Uh, were they cargo, transport, or they military? Could have been craft? commercial airliners. Uh, okay. You know, it could have been anything. I'm sure it was probably military. I've only been able to find little pieces about the ABIG. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, more than likely, just the fuselage. Um, coming down the road, coming down the entrance, yeah. and then what, they'll just explode it? Yeah. Or they'll fire um, ordnance into it? What would they do? Well, all I know is that obviously the, uh, the, the berm structures on the surface contain ordnance. We know that there was ordnance in there when we were first here. Yeah. Because they were still, they still had a That's process. since been removed and that's where the ammunition bunker was. Yes. And we've actually, you know, we're the ones who removed the uh, yeah. ammunition bunker. So that's all been removed and we've actually just upgraded, upgraded the entire area now. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of very intriguing stuff up there on the surface. The floor is a lot safer than it once was at sea. There used to be some very dodgy plywood in here. What is timber? Who brought that in? Obviously that was not in back I think the salvage crews probably brought that in to help them get things out of here. There was so much in here. I mean, the military took the turbines, of course. Yep. But then they came in after everything else of value. So what was this pit here? This was the ice banks, almost certainly. So what the ice bank was, was a backup chilling. If they lost power, they actually chilled the water down to freezing. Yep. Into basically, essentially, a giant block of ice. And then if they lost power to some of the chilling equipment or they needed additional chilling, they could actually flow water or glycol solution through that to chill it back down. Right. And that was sort of a backup solution, that's my understanding. And it was enormous. It occupied this entire space. So this was all covered up? Yeah, this was all. Aspects. And not only was this covered up, it was filled in. The thing stood probably about seven, eight feet tall. How the hell they got it out of here? They must have cut it into chunks, I imagine. Here's the secondary room. 
We found some uh, schematics. And Did some you old... find? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is where I found a bunch of documents right in here. Okay. So we actually found some too. Just watch yourself. You don't want to go too deep in there. Yeah, I know. This is all asbestos. There's some right there. Everything underneath here is suspect. You might find some more tech orders down there. Yep. We had to tackle this room very, very carefully. But we found a whole bunch of documents in this section here. Ah. Just watch this step, too. That's a huge hole right there. There's a hole yeah. just there. Right I see it. Yep. Yeah. It was under this section we found something. Yeah. Well, don't step on that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there may be some interesting diagrams underneath this mess. God, I forgot how nasty it was. This tank here is by far the most sinister. I love this one. Huh. Yeah, the sodium hydroxide tank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was all part of their, their water softener. Yeah, I love this. <laughs> There's another one on the other side over here. No, too rusty. Yeah, most of what you see here is off of the uh, generator exhaust. Yep. Now you've got a little bit of underfloor going on here, yep. but not like the Beale sites where there's like two more levels. Yeah, you mentioned that before. Yeah. So you get you get a number of pits interconnecting the pipe and you get your pipe connection runs all around. That's what I was asking. That's what I was actually asking you. Uh, was there two more levels? Yeah, not that I've ever seen. Okay, so these are the wells. The blueprints. That's the first well here. Yep. And the second one is over here. And that's 1,800 feet down to the aquifer, and it runs on a pendulum system. Hmm. And they're still productive, right? Yep. All this nastiness, of course, has been flowing down into the casings and just sort of disappearing. I don't know what's to come. Yeah, before we start the pipes, we need all that water. Yeah. We'll have to be uh, refined, filtered, cleaned. Yeah. Just watch water now. Just keep on holding on to something? Yeah, uh, definitely. I do not want to go down there. Even if I don't get hurt, I wouldn't want to go into that. Yeah, you're, you're incredibly lucky that they didn't tear out your mezzanine. Oh yeah. I mean, it's on the other side, so it wasn't uh, Washington State. Yeah. That mezzanine floor is very handy. Because yeah. otherwise you can't access the intake or the exhaust. Oh yeah. Out. And that's, it's, that's like 20 feet up. Yep. So the power zone is going to be quite a, um, a significant clean up before it. Yeah, we're very busy drying. I don't know what level that used to record. Does it say I love these. It reminds me of like uh, church pipes, you know, <laughs> church organs. Mm -hmm. This one has oil on it. Yeah. These here, these presses here, from, these were manufactured back in uh, Tennessee, back in the day. Really? Primarily, what, what were these for? These are barrel storage. Basically, they would put 55 gallon drums here and cinch them down with this so that if there was enough of a, of a disturbance. So the drums were placed here. Yep. And these, these might take what? Just... This would just keep them from tipping over. So okay. if there was a seismic disturbance, like a, a, near, a near miss from a nuclear attack, all your lube oil barrels and everything else wouldn't get thrown all about the place. Okay, so it's mainly just lubricants, oil, yep. and they're all stored here. So yep. these basically just kept them upright. Yep, it's just a clamp for a barrel. I mean, <laughs> rather over-engineered, I think, but... Uh, you know what? <laughs> that is a case of over-engineering, over because I've, I've been fascinated. I go, what, 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 what was this actually used for? So now we know. These basically maintain the other barrels. I'm going to maintain, I'm going to keep this and uh, repurpose it because I think it's, I think first of all, look, it looks, looks really, really cool, right? You can just imagine these ending up in one of the bars around here yeah. as a table, table top. Yeah. You turn the other way, an adjustable table. It's incredible. <laughs> I just can't believe how robust this is. I mean, just yeah. look at this. Talk about oh, over engineering. This high beam construction. <laughs> look at those mounts. I mean, the, the suspension. It's still lucky. It works great. I'll jump up and down. Jump up and down, Pete. I'm surprised I can move it. You're saying that one engine and one turbine at a time was working, not all four. Yeah, typically. As long as they were all working, because the launcher system took so much more additional power, you'd have to bring at least one more of these online. These were. I understand a constant maintenance nightmare. Which one? Another thing that's higher 
carrying projectiles. Yeah, yeah. another one. Yeah. In fact, this one over here is a target over here on this one. Keep dry and handle with care. I suspect that box may have once held some nasty ordnance itself. Right, there's been a lot of activity over the years. Yeah, All this will be preserved, as well as this tank over here. We have the sodium and the dioxide solution. These are the blueprints that actually tell you what the hell these things are. Yeah, that, I'm going to get that operational for the meters. In fact, you know what I just I just found? Yeah, that looks like it looks like something like that, right? It's very similar, but I think it's a separate one. This one looks like it's missing the glass. There are so many gauges and dials and meters in here. It's the same material anyway. Very similar. We found his chair. Is that right? Look. Yeah. That's his chair. <laughs> Is there a label on the back of this, by chance? No clues. Wait a minute. John Bird Carlson. So this is comm system equipment here. So if they, if they had any communications, I think this has migrated from the control center to here. I think this used to be in your upper level of the rest of the comm right. equipment. It's been completely stripped. For sure. Yeah, there's, they took the wax right out of it. <laughs> I love the wagon. I think the wagon is a little, it's a bit late for the rust only on that one, but look at it. I can't see if it's a radio flyer, but that's kind of funny. And another enormous target. The one there? Yep. Yeah. Do not move. I think it's behind the desk there. And again, you'll see. There's some old tiger practice. See where things have struck it? Yep. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's another plate with a hole in it. It's all the air filters and everything else. Let's uh, head upstairs. Zero. It's all sound tight. First. The LP1 tank down there. I noticed this right here. Yep. This makes me think that there may have been something done to the tank after the fact. Yep. That we built. It's like you know, there's an LP1 tank. Just before the other launching area below. Yep. This here, these are the other bubbles. The exhaust pipes. And you yep. see the asbestos is all. Uh, oh, yeah. So you. Uh, the remnants of the exhaust pipes. Yeah. It is somewhat um, <laughs> precarious around here. But we can actually go by just. To, you want to be a little bit careful here, you know? Certainly. Uh, this actually dropped a long ago. Is this piece over here? This last piece? Hmm. As you can see, this whole thing is suspended from above. It always, I always found it amusing that this was... Yeah, another, there's another five blast valves down there. Yeah, they left them intact, didn't they? Yep. They're they in the... Some places they had taken the plates off. It's on the old position. Hmm. They said something to watch out for with the blast valves is there's a spring in there. And uh, when you're taking them apart, there's a possibility that when they're old, they may fracture and sort of shatter into nasty metal shrapnel. Right. Yeah, something to just keep in mind if you ever have any contractors do anything with them. Yep. All the squirrel cage ladies, all manufactured. My uncle used to work at this plant in La Crosse, Wisconsin. A train? Yep. Oh, you'll see right there, La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's where it was manufactured. Yeah. They came here by rail. And these exhaust pipes, they were directly attached to each turbine down the power, yep. the power band, right? Yep, and I think they just, you know, while well, you've been up there, they travel yeah. through those modules. They travel way through, yeah. Exit right yeah. on the other side. Exit on the other side, for the shaft. Yeah. Now, the, this of course is 
completely different than all the other toxins. Uh, It took thirty-five thousand dollars to get them to come in and change a compressor head. So yes, they are very much still alive, probably for exactly that reason. Train, we need your help. Just to let you know, mm -hmm. give you a bit of a heads up. Uh, whoever the CEO is, please contact me. I need to speak to you very, very soon. So <laughs> well, this thing, I don't know if you can feel it. Of course, this is all suspended. to draw humidity out of the air as it came in so that they weren't bringing in, you know, 50, 60, Because they are intake putting over here, so basically before they, they did, using a dehumidifier. Yep. It would, all, it would all be collected basically with the rest of the waters that ran down the coils. And it would draw the moisture out of the air then, by that method. It seems counterintuitive, but uh, yeah, it's the same system we have where I'm at. These are 60 inches, I think they're 60 or 80 inches in diameter. Bloody lines anyway. They would get uh, they would get some false pressure readings or electrical systems if they had a power failure. These things were designed to go to close if they lost power. And they would close in a fraction of a second and make a tremendous noise. Well, those are, those are concrete blocks, I imagine, but still cracked up in the past. The, uh, the part of the tunnel's actually been compromised on the left-hand side, hmm. where you got sand from the outside coming in. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't think your water's blocking Yeah. But this is the other big dust collector. There used to be a little, like, thing that would stir the dust, so it would continue to fall down in the drum. 
But yeah, this used to be a horrible mud hole, you know, it's all wet and nasty down there. It's the first time I've never seen it dry. Yep, these are all part of that water system again. Yep, for the water treatment down below. Is it gantry? Yeah, see how the, he's got that cable attached and I bet you he pulled it over. Because I'm pretty damn sure it wasn't there before. Although somebody you said the gantry it. was further extended this way? Well, I think, it, I think it, yeah, I think it was over there someplace before. Well, he probably just attached that and somebody dragged it over this way. Let's see if it can be dragged this way. This is not too different water level wise from the last time I looked. All right, now who did who did this high wire act? Somebody been over there? Yeah, I think it was some mm -hmm. of the compressed gases, nitrogen, helium, mm -hmm. whatever was going through there. So I thought what happened was coming in through this. Uh, so you're lucky I didn't make off with the whole damn thing. It all works flawlessly. Yeah, those hinges always impressed, and then we're exiting the facility when the door suddenly closed. This is during construction. Yes. These were tradesmen, probably people from Lockheed Martin as well, anybody else involved in the launcher area. The door had fallen, yeah, completely crushed, and it's really a, a horrific injury. Uh, 